So I got kicked out of Amazon Associates on the week of Black Friday. Yeah, so unfortunately, that's correct. Um, the week Black Friday week started, so that Monday, the 24th of November, I was, you know, I woke up in the morning, I checked my email like I usually do, and I had an email from Amazon um, that essentially said I have been rejected after they have finally reviewed my application. And at first, I wanted to run, knock on their door, and say, hey, you don't understand. This is Black Friday week, and if I'm going to make any money ever whatsoever, this is my best week's chance of making any legitimate money. Oh, no, you don't care? Oh, uh, terms of service? Ah, okay. So they wrote me a letter and they basically explained that I violated their policies and they gave me a specific example. And I'll read that to you now. It says, hey, um, below average blogger, we've now reviewed your application to the associates program. Unfortunately, it did not meet our program requirements. As a result, we have closed the account under which you have been temporarily approved. Why? The violations include the following. Your website includes unapproved use of Amazon trademark words, trademarked words, images or reviews which may contain variations or misspellings we do not we do not allow the unapproved use of urls trademarks logos amazon web services views etc that include words that are trademarked by amazon and this is a violation of our trademark guidelines for an immediate reference click here which takes you to the agreement you agreed to when you signed up and an example specifically of what i did wrong can be found at this url where they where they essentially linked the article i guess that they had looked at and found the violations. And so obviously, first thing I did was I went to the terms of service they referenced, and it was a bunch of legal nonsense. And so I know I'm a big boy, I'm an, I'm an adult, and I need to be able to read terms of services and agree to them. I get it, that's on me. However, I was panicking that morning and I wanted to just know what I did wrong quickly so I could fix it and, and hopefully get back rolling. I went to that URL, and that was where I started using my new table builders and my articles where I would um, I was using a free plugin called Table Builder. I would create a table, a product comparison table, and I would give pros, cons, the Amazon picture of the item, and the current reviews, as well as the price of the item. And in going back and looking at their terms, I realized that a price is a putting their price is a violation, putting their images is a violation, and also putting any sort of reviews or, or representation of reviews is a violation. And in hindsight, it kind of makes sense, right? So if I give a price and I advertise it as a certain price on my website, well, I'm now representing Amazon at a certain price point with a certain image and a certain review. Well, guess what? All of those things can change. Different models come out, pictures change. Um, I don't have rights to use that picture. Reviews can change by the day. It turns out that, could, that product could be crap. And the day I put it out on my website, I gave it five stars, which is what it was the day I posted it. However, what if over the next six months, the quality is terrible, the reviews come in, and it's now a two-star item? Well, I've been representing a five-star item under Amazon's name. So, and additionally, I was adding the price, which in hindsight is not even a good idea to begin with because I want a buyer to click and go to Amazon and make a decision. I don't want them to look at my article and see a price and that sway their decision and them choose at that point not to click and say, oh, that's too much or too cheap or whatever, whatever bias they have internally. I don't want to trigger that by listing the price. So, so it wouldn't be below average bloggers if I did not explain um, my mistakes to you guys and how I made it right. So not only spending that five hours just going through there and fixing all that content, I then had to reapply to Amazon Associates Fortunately for me, they give you basically an immediate approval. And what happens is once you reach a certain threshold of sales, they then go and manually either approve or deny your site. I think at first they figure it doesn't really matter. They're not sending us any money. But once you start making some consistent sales, they go in and make that check. And so for me, when they went in and made the check, they found the issues and dumped my site. So I fixed the issues, I went back into Amazon, I reapplied, I made sure I included all the social media accounts like WP Eagles uh, mentioned in his video, which I'll link in the card right here. And which by the way is a great video because I went in and watched it that morning because obviously now I care. And so that's where I learned through his advice as well as the Amazon's terms page, kind of where everything went wrong. 
and it's now fixed. So I had to go, I got an immediate reapproval, temporary reapproval, and when I hit a certain threshold again, they're gonna go manually look, so I have to make sure it's good. But I also had to go in and readjust all my links. So I didn't realize I had so many. I mean, obviously we all have a lot, but it's not until you have to go in and manually change each one that you learn the hard way, what everyone else will tell you now, which is use the long version of your Amazon affiliate link. That way you can just go in and change the, I guess it's the ID number or something within it that makes it faster. I think there's also some plugins that will make it faster for you. Either way, me being below average blogger, I did not have any of that in place. I had to go through and manually update all of that. Um, I now have longer links and I now have no violations of Amazon terms on there. But there's a downside to this and it's a big downside. Aside from being kicked out and having to redo all that and all that work, that's whatever. That's a lesson learned on me and I'll kind of, you know, I'll get back to it. Those of you who've been following my income reports know I don't make a lot of money on Amazon and I finally got started getting consistent sales. So I went the first five months having no good sales. However, I was just now this month, matter of fact, like the last two weeks starting to get consistent sales. And I was up to, I don't know, like $9 in my Amazon associates account, which for those of you in this grind working, you remember that first time you made a buck, 10 bucks, you know, those are milestones. And so I was really excited about that progress and I was getting consistent hits, clicks, commissions, it was just all adding up and it was working. So I had to go through, my account got dumped, I had to reapply, redo all the links, and this is like Monday or Tuesday before Black Friday. And because of that, I was in a panic mode to get it done. Well, I got it all done, and then I was like, like a hawk watching these, my Amazon Associates reports every day. And for the first 24 hours, it said I had no clicks. And I thought, well, that's definitely not right because I had a lot of traffic on the website that day and the odds of getting no clicks with all that traffic are pretty slim. I chalked it up to being the first 24 hours. The system needs to do its thing. I don't know. And so the next day I had a few clicks and the next day, you know, I had 40 clicks, but no orders. And so it just messed with like, I think my... I don't want to say morale because morale, did, morale didn't go anywhere, but I had this mental momentum as I was seeing those consistent clicks and consistent orders and consistent commissions and everything was just kind of falling into place. And then for it to stop abruptly on a very important week, to throw it back together and have really no traction again, like I'll show you where I'm at now. All right, so here we are. You notice up until... The 24th, it is zero. And I actually got my application reapproved on the 24th. So that day I know I had a lot of traffic on the site and I didn't get anything registering. So I'm assuming there's like a 24 hour buffer period. And then you see the next day, 10 clicks, zero orders, 41 clicks, zero orders, five clicks, zero orders, two clicks, zero orders, eight clicks, zero orders. So everything is back, right? So I've got my Amazon Associates account. I'm back running in the program. But as you can see, no sales. I feel like sales just stopped. And I know a lot of that's obviously just mental, um, but it's, it's frustrating. So I'm rambling at this point. If you are in a new seller position, you are a new blogger, you are a new affiliate marketer, and you're running your Amazon account and you're starting to get some sales, I would definitely recommend going in and make sure you're not violating any of their policies. Mine specifically, again, were showing reviews, showing prices, and showing Amazon pictures. Those have all been fixed. Um, again, I will link WP Eagle's video right here that mentions where to, I think there's nine things he brings up, and they're all really good things, including like adding social media accounts that are linked to your website. Definitely check out his video. Definitely go in and look at your content and make sure you're not violating Amazon's terms of service. And that is it. We will check in here in a couple days with the end of November report. It was an interesting month, a lot of interesting numbers, and uh, that's where we're at. We'll talk to you guys later.